It's bigger. It's better. It's Kenya's number one intellectual debate platform. It's the Great Debaters Contest. Only on KBC Channel 1. I am your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperanza Kapanga. The motion on the table today is religious institutions should pay taxes. While proposing this motion, we have Mokuroene Boys High School. And going against them is Kenyatta High School. Both schools are having the premiere appearance on this contest. Well, let's see what they have for us. Proposer number one, you have three minutes. I'm worried that even thugs are hooking themselves to those who are moving parallel to heaven. I am Samuel Gitomo from Mokoroine Boys. I study here to strongly propose the motion that states that religious institutions should pay taxes. First of all, what are religious institutions? Combining the meaning of religion and institution from the Oxford Dictionary, I based it as organizations that have an objective of passing a certain belief about a supreme God to a community. So we can gauge this for example, we have the churches, we have temples, we have synagogues, and others. On the other hand, what is the tax? This is the money paid to the government from certain earnings to help it to offer public services. It may be individual or organization. The first point of proposing this motion is because the church is leaping some of, or the religious organizations are leaping some of the developments that are being given by the government from the revenue. For example, gauge them from roads, that is infrastructure, electricity. It goes without mentioning even the security of the country. For example, we have big uh, religious institutions. For example, churches. If I take uh, the most famous St. Andrew's PCA, where no one can give a speech or preach without a use of a PA. A PA is monitored and it is uh, helped to work by the electricity. So if the church, if the temples, if the synagogues have to leave these, these developments, for example, the electricity, why should then they be, uh, why should then evade from paying taxes? My second point is to practice what they, what they preach. For example, in churches, they always tell us, pay taxes. Vote, keep peace. As from paying taxes, it means there are also organizations. And since they get income in form of offerings and others, constant enough, they should also pay taxes. Let me call myself short. Pastor Puzo, you have three minutes to present your case. Religion is a system of beliefs or customs related to a supernatural being or a deity. On stage, it's a fantasy morage, Kenyatta High School. And my first question, do churches make a profit or a draw in the government's revenue? My answer is no. This is because their mind is used on building the churches. They're using charitable works. For example, they try and go to offer food to the needy, offer clothing, materials, and everything. How does the government try to help the charity in charity work? How? That's my question. And number two, how? How, is the, how can the church offer the, offer the government its money and the money is used in wasteful resources? On the past two weeks, we have had the NYS scandal, whereby the NYS is losing some amount of 90 billion Kenyan shillings. How can the church offer its money, which is used for the charitable work, to go and get misused by the people? 
Or the people who use the money in their pockets, how? That's my first question to the proposers. To the proposers. Secondly, the clear reason that the churches are not taxed is that the taxing them will present, or present the possibility of the government from taxing it. This make, will make the church like out of business with excessive taxes. As it is currently structured, this is not short of happening. The Jewish, the Muslim, the Christian, and other communities can't prevent any other religion from coming up. But if, if they can all be prevented by coming up, if the churches come up and see like they are want taxes by the government. The religious leaders and the communists, that is the customers of the church, that is the believers, they still have a works to pay, they have jobs, they have families which they cater for. Then I wonder, how, how then should they then come back and pay taxes to the church? The money given to the church is not meant for the paying taxes. The money given to the church is given for the people from the deep down in their hearts to give a resource something to their creator or maybe to the one who, believe, who they believe in. This cannot be like, I'm giving money to the government again. For what reason? I can't understand this. Religious institutions take great care in charitable work in offering food the champions as they said in the first place. Through the tithes and offerings, it will be spent all the money through the Christian communities as large as they can. Upon taxing them, it will be demoralizing the community which will move funds in the church. And my last question as I get, get sit down is this. Does the government take any part in developing the churches? Charismas. Second proposal, you have three minutes for cross-examination. Kenneth Wachira from Mukuroine Boys. I'm here to strongly propose the motion that says religious institutions should pay tax. First of all, to re-examine the point that has just been given by my fellow opposers and has just said that even if the funds from the church, they are taxed, they are going to waste. Now, my question is, does this mean that even ordinary Kenyans should not pay tax because it is still going to waste? Another thing, religious institutions, non-profit status, it is very obsolete. Can the churches today say, silver and gold, we have none? Some of these churches, they own institutions like universities. They have uh, uh, other institutions that are charging fees to offer service. It's not that they are giving free services to Kenyans. So where is the money going? Where is the money that they are receiving back from these institutions? Where does it going? And taxation of these institutions, it will promote equality in such a way that there are some churches that they have expensive public address systems. They go to an extent of having uh, screens for, for, for communications in the churches. They have luxurious buses. They go to an extent of giving free Wi-Fi to their members. And now, there are churches that are developing. If these churches, they are taxed, it means they'll almost have the same financial capability in such a way that, because even sometimes members are forced to give out for, for development projects that are not even there. So it means that it'll promote equality between May, the, the churches that are there in, in, in Kenya, and will also prevent differences between now the rich churches and the poor churches, because they, can, they cannot afford what these big churches, as they are called, have. Another thing, it creates a real economic burden to an ordinary taxpayer. Why am I saying this? Statistics, statistics proved in uh, 2011 that New York loses about $627 million in tax, taxation of property, property belonging to religious institutions. These institutions, because they are not taxed, the government loses a lot of money, which could be used to ease the burden for normal taxpayers. Normal taxpayers, they are complaining that the government is levying too much tax on them. Why is this? There are bonds, there are debts that have been, that have been brought into the country, like uh, Eurobond. It has not been, 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 been refunded yet. Why? Because even the churches, and they have a lot of money, they are not being taxed. So I cannot agree that the churches should not be taxed. And I arrest my case. Second opposer, you have three minutes for rebuttal. Taxing religion is taxing God, the founder of our beloved land, Kenya. For more tragedies and punitive one than the one like the 
flooding we are experiencing, we can, we can tempt God through taxing. Uh, first of all, I would like to correct my, my first fellow opposer who talked about infrastructure. In saying that the infrastructure cannot develop until the taxing of, of the churches or the religious institution, I think uh, it is not that we need the religious institution so that the infrastructure can be developed. So no need to tax the religious institution in the state that you want to, to defend yourself and that you need to develop the infrastructure. Please, it's not that the, the shilling or the dollars of the church which will make the infrastructure, but the whole country. On about, he also said that like any other organization, they should pay tax. Uh, according to the Constitution of Kenya, all the non-profit organization should not pay tax. I think the church is among of the non-profit organization. Why tax them? That violating the Constitution of Kenya. On to the first point, I'd like to say that taxing the religious institution will lead to double taxing of the people who are funding the churches. We are seeing that I'm basing on the churches because we see people who provide money for the religious institution are the believers. The believers are the workers, and the workers are the people of the government, are the people of Kenya. The worker is paying tax, the pay as you want tax, such a lot of tax, yet he, he contribute to the he contribute to the church as you're taxing him. I think that will lead to the demoralizing of the people who are funding the churches and this will lead to the religious degradation in our country and which it will also violating the constitution law that we should give the freedom of religion and conscience. Also, who will help the poor, the needy, and the less fortunate in the society, if not the religious institution? We can see that the, like the government of Kenya, is ever promising us that it will eradicate poverty, but I think that will just be a dream, and the world is ending. So that dream will not come true. The government are not able to eradicate the poverty in Kenya. So I would like to say that the people who are ready and, need, and, and hurting to, to help the needy in the society are only the churches, because we, we take an example. Churches are located in the local places. So they should be exempted from tax, so that the money which could be taxed, she could be helped the needy in the society. So the government, when given that opportunity or the chance to cater for the needy in the society, I think will not be capable of doing it so. And also on to my last point, I'd like to say that taxing the, taxing the religious institution is separating the churches from the government. And also this, we are founder of the government of Kenya and the founder of the land of Kenya. It was based on government, it was based on religious. So we, this will lead to religious crisis and the dangers of religious crisis are widely known. I'm a Missy Kalama from Kenyatta School, Maiga. The opposers have been asked if they do not want churches to pay tax simply because it is wasted, is it really that the larger percentage of our tax is actually useless for us? Proposal number three, you have three minutes to answer the question. Welcome to this world where everything is clothed with the fact that the truth is hidden in the world of the region. I am Stephen from the great Mukroini boys. I want to refer I want to answer my fellow friend there by saying that this in this world you are in this land you are taxed according to what you want. It's very good that you are noting that the income that the churches get is not constant. And well to that, in fact you, we request for that small income that they have so that it can turn up to gap in the the gap in the budgetary of the two trillion that the CS announced it. To my fellow friends here, you have to confirm that we are not like the 27 centuries. Uh, the 19th, the 17th, they didn't know uh, there, where everybody and the church then did not have money. Nowadays, they have silver and gold. They have those big institutions. They have those big cars, you the buses, and they conduct the businesses. So 
We cannot be just be saying that the church gets money for God's power or for what. When you, what you have to say and confirm is that the money that we, all the worshippers or the believers donate goes straight to them. And these are the church leaders, the official organizers, and pocket it. Of course, you cannot be expecting that that money will head to heaven. God himself do not require money to pay the angels. I, God in heaven do not require money to pay the angels. In fact, he says that everything on this earth, he has granted it to everybody, as far as you get for them. The idea that you do not tax the churches is to prevent them to be out of the politics. Nowadays, the church are fully, and I confirm once again, they are fully involved in politics. We already, churches are now fully involved in politics. You are going to find that the campaigns that are being conducted are being conducted in the church in, and maybe the political seat, the, polit, the political flag bearers of different parties come to churches, maybe to request for votes, advertise that we come from the same church or maybe we have we are from the same belief, maybe Christian or the other. So we cannot therefore start here to say that the benefit instead that the church should not be taxed because by taxing it, we involve it in the politics. In fact, now they are fully in politics. So the point of not taxing them is not applying here. To my point, I have to identify that by taxing, you are going to reduce the coax who are involving the, the others into misleading beliefs. I rest my case. That opposer, you have three minutes to respond to your question. We are the change. A scholar by the name Karl Marx said, religion is the opium of the mind. I want to answer the question that, a question that have, has been asked. He, has, he is asking that, he is saying that the larger percentage of the taxes that you pay are used properly. Then, we want our money to be full fully accountable, and to be used to the fullest. Our money should not be used partially, but to the full accountability, so that we may not lose trust in our governments. When religious institutions shall pay taxes, this shall demoralize and discourage religion. Imagine you are paying taxes in your business, and then you go to church and pay tax. That we, make, we mean that you pay tax two twice, twice, Whereas there's someone who is paying once. This will tend to discourage people from their own religion. I would like to discourage my, my I want to, to, to correct my opponents here. They are mainly rooting themselves religion as only churches. Religious include mosques, temples, synagogues, and any form of worship of any deity. So this shall discourage the worship that is deserved. And to this shall bring about issues of fights. A research made in Nigeria shows that 250 billion euros of revenue go to waste each year. This, according to research by the BBC, shows that it is twice, it is twice what the government intends to use per year. What is the essence of us paying more tax and it goes to more waste? What is the essence of us paying money to the government and they are rendering no services to us? Churches go to missions, churches go to children's home, but the government, not even at a single time, is it involved. There's no need to pay taxes. Churches aren't businesses. In the Constitution, it says that we have, it is freedom of worship and freedom of expression and freedom of association. Why do you want to pay for that freedom? Is that freedom? It isn't at all. You should not pay taxes. And religious institutions, and I repeat, they should not pay taxes. Founders of this great nation, Kenya, founders who, 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 who lifted the pillars and, and they made the foundation of this country, intended to raise a country which is federal. 
but you have turned Kenya and you have turned the whole of African nations and even to the world as a whole. Countries of theocracy. I'm Michael Njuguna from Kenyatta High School. Kindly join me to oppose this motion. Thank you. Opposers, you have one minute to make a final submission. We have said very well that religious institutions, non-profiting status is, ob is obsolete. Get me well. We are not talking of days that we were talking about people giving sheep in the church. People offering uh, grains in the church. These days, they are offering and offering it on the table. So that you can be discouraged to bring your 10 shillings, your 20 shillings on the table. Therefore, what they are getting in terms of fundraising, in terms of sponsors, in terms of even selling fresh fry to us and telling us it is a part of anointing, it is constant enough, very constant, that the government can tax it because it is the earning organizations. By the way, we have, according to a research which was lately done, it, I think it is the, the, the most lately done, 2018. It shows that in Kenya, we have many churches than industries. So we should not consider them as non-profiting. That should, they should be counted as a profitable organization. Thank you. Proposers, you have one minute to make a final submission. My fellow proposer talked about religious leaders driving expensive cars. Instead of the, the money used in buying the cars, so it should be taxed. I want to ask my fellow proposer, how sure are you that the money the, the, the religious leader has used to buy the car is from the religious institution? I think that is accusation, and accusation is worse than killings. A religious institution more of businesses so as to tax them. Thank you. Thank you to both teams, Mukuroini Boys and uh, Kenyatta High. Uh, but even without going to any particular team, I would like to first and foremost say that that was uh, a motion which was very interesting and a motion which we could have said a lot, much more than what we have said uh, today. So both teams, I don't think you made uh, or you did your preparations well. Uh, you did not do a, uh, enough research and therefore you are not able to present or to give us uh, enough uh, points or substantive uh, points as far as that motion is uh, uh, concerned. Mukurene boys, uh, Samuel as a first speaker, um, I did not find you eloquent enough. Uh, it was not possible to clearly hear what it is that you wanted to say. So probably you want to uh, work on that. I did not hear you give us any citations to all the uh, assertions that you made. Uh, so once again, if you had done your research well, you would have been able to uh, justify the motion. Uh, as a team, I feel uh, you, you could have given so much. You could have even cited examples of places where uh, religious institutions have paid taxes and what has been the effect of that. Um, Number one, this motion could have been more justly uh, debated, so we feel there could have been more uh, coming from your end. But we want to commend the fact that you're confident speakers and that you came and did your level best. You know, religious institutions should be should be should pay taxes to the to Mukurene boys. Why? And are there any examples as it has been said that would have been better? We know of many religious institutions now that have even gone into business and are doing greatly in business, all right? So should they probably even give examples? There was even a research done here in Kenya about some of the revenues that they have. So we could have expected to could have at least said a few uh, that have been done. To Kenyatta um, uh, High School, you know, probably you're trying to tell us that, listen, taxing, I think that was coming, you say that taxing religion is taxing God, which is a good statement, but now, Go down to prove to us why we shouldn't. Um, should they be probably, what is your suggestion? 
don't tax, so let's do what? Let them scot free, or should the government probably pay them as some states do, all right? Pay them and nobody gives anything in the church maybe because the government is sorting the, the, the people who lead those churches. So there could have been more, all right, in a way of convincing us, but I want to appreciate what you have done. All the best. The judges have awarded Mukuruine Boys High School 65%. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Kenyatta High School. The judges awarded you 66%, making you the winners of this debate. Congratulations to both teams for a job well done. That's it, the Great Debaters contest from us today. We would like to appreciate our sponsors, Blaze by Safaricom and Brand Kenya Board for facilitating this. We'd also like to ask our viewers, please keep the conversation going on all our social media platforms. The hashtag is GDC for SDGs. I have been your host, Esperanza Kapanga. And I am Chris Boru. See you next time, same place, same time.